Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. HN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your sports break for this January 19th edition, as we'll talk about some of the great moments in sports history that happened on January 19th, the athletes that uh, were participating or a part of them, and the uniform numbers that they may have wore on that day or for those events. Uh, Before we do, let's make sure that you are aware that we have a daily newsletter. It's so easy to sign up for. You can cancel at any time, and it's totally free. It's everything coming out of the pig pen. It's uh, everything Pigskin Dispatch, jerseydispatch.com, and as well as Orville Mulligan Sports Writer and some articles from sportshistorynetwork.com as well. So easy to do. Go to the show notes of this very podcast or at the top of jerseydispatch.com. Now those uniform numbers we promised you for January 19th. We're going to talk about the uniform numbers of 9, 90, 18, 74, 22, 56, 16, 32, 8, 24, 14, 41, number 10, and number 12. January 19th, 1932, the NHL's Charlie Conacher became the first Toronto Maple Leaf player to score five goals in one contest. He started off strong too, lighting up the lamp just five seconds into the game. Conacher wore the number nine during his career with the Leafs. On January 19th, 1937, we had a trio of players going into the Baseball Hall of Fame. It was Cy Young, Tris Speaker, and Nap LaJory. On the 19th of January, 1964, the third American Football League All-Star Game took place at Balboa Stadium in San Diego. The Western Division defeated the Eastern Division 27 to 24. Most valuable players in that game were the LA Chargers running back, number 22, Keith Lincoln. And on defense was Oakland Raiders linebacker, number 56, Archie Mastis. On January 19, 1969, the Houston Oilers linebacker George Webster earned the AFC All-Star Game Defensive MVP Award at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. George wore the number 90 while on the roster of the Oilers as the Western Division defeated the Eastern Division 38-25. The MVP on offense, well, that was none other than number 16, the quarterback of the Kansas State Chiefs at the time, Len Dawson, Hall of Famer. January 19, 1969, old number 18 Rams quarterback Roman Gabriel was awarded the NFL Pro Bowl Offensive Most Valuable Player of the Game, while Merlin Olson, number 74 of the Los Angeles Rams playing defensive tackle, received the honor on defense in that uh, grand game. On January 19, 1971, we had the NHL All-Star Game, the 24th edition of that uh, annual contest at the Boston Garden it was held. And the Western Division defeated the Eastern Division by the score of 2-1. The most valuable player of the game, Bobby Hull, number 9 of the Chicago, who played left wing in the game. January 19, 1972. Another trio of great baseball players going into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Sandy Koufax, number 32 of the Dodgers. Yogi Berra of the Yankees, who wore number 8. An early win, number 24, was the number he wore most of the time, and he played with a variety of clubs, all going into the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. In 1977, on the 19th of January, Ernie Banks, number 14 of the Chicago Cubs, was selected to enter into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And another entry in 1978 on January 19th was Eddie Matthews, who wore number 41, uh, also going into Cooperstown in their great museum of baseball. January 19th, 1991, we had another NHL All-Star Game take place, the 42nd annual game. It was played at Chicago Stadium in Chicago, Illinois, and the Campbell beat the Wales Conference 11-5. Vincent Damphouse, number 10 of the Toronto Maple Leafs, playing center, was the most valuable player of that contest. 
On January 19, 1996, the NHL Board of Governors approved the sale of the Winnipeg Jets. This officially cleared the way for the team to move from Winnipeg and go south of the border into Phoenix, Arizona in the time for the 1996-97 season. January 19, 2002, it was the Tuck Rule game, the AFC Divisional Playoff game. With under two minutes left to play, the New England Patriots trailed the Oakland Raiders 13-10 in a driving snowstorm when number 12 Tom Brady apparently fumbled but it was ruled an incomplete pass after some conferencing of the officials. Patriots went on to score and win that game 16-13 to in an overtime session. And that's your sports history for January 19th. A little sports break for your day. And I hope you enjoy this uh, sports history because we bring it to you each and every day. And uh, hope you join us each day to listen to some more. In the meantime, if you're still thirsting for a little bit of uh, football and sports history, well, you can go to pigskindispatch.com, sportshistorynetwork.com, or the home of this website, jerseydispatch.com. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. This penalty kill is almost over. I got to get back out on the ice. But thanks again for joining us for another great edition of Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We'll see you tomorrow. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. Get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network, and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.